When you think of murderers, I imagine that you normally think of blue collar workers or unemployed people, often entrenched in petty crime, drugs, gangs, or indeed all three of these. It always comes as more of a shock when murderers come from certain professions. We know that a high number of company CEOs and directors would qualify as psychopaths on account of their ruthlessness and lack of empathy. So businessmen as murderers, while rarer, is to an extent believable. But the cases where it becomes even harder to believe are those where killers come from caring professions. Now, during the course of this case, I will be using the word allegedly an awful lot, since the trial has yet to happen, even though it is thought to be imminent. Having said that, the prosecution case is very strong and it seems likely that there will be a guilty verdict. But until then, I will have to, of course, hedge my bets. This is the case of the alleged poisoner and respected dentist James Tolliver Craig and this is Murder of Crows. We're heading to Denver, Colorado for this one. Denver is the state capital of Colorado and is the fifth most populous state capital with a population of just over 715,000 according to the most recent census. Located in the western United States, in the South Platte River Valley, on the western edge of the High Plains, the city is just east of the front range of the Rocky Mountains. Now, the city was named for James W. Denver, who was governor of the Kansas Territory at the time that the city was founded. And the city was founded at the confluence of Cherry Creek and the South Platte River in 1858, during the so-called Gold Rush era. Denver has been nicknamed the Mile High City don't be dirty, because its official elevation is exactly one mile, 5,280 feet or 1,609 meters above sea level. Denver is a major cultural hub with a variety of museums and cultural institutions including the Denver Performing Arts Complex and the Denver Art Museum. 
and within sports, Denver has sports teams in all of the major professional leagues. Denver was named the best place to live in the United States by US News and World Report in 2016. But like any other place, it isn't necessarily a peaceful haven to all of those in Denver. And with this case in mind, we need to look at a married couple called James and Angela Craig. And we're looking at their life in the early 2020s. James Craig married Angela Prey in December of 1999. And by the 2020s, after two decades of marriage, he was still, rather sweetly, saved as the boy on Angela's phone. Angela was heavily involved in the lives of their six children and also in school activities. And the whole family was also active in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. With Angela filling various positions, including choir director, teacher and youth organisation leader, so she was obviously heavily involved in the lives of her children and the children of her community. But she also loved working as a family history consultant, which she began by working on her own family's history. But she also helped friends to complete theirs. And through doing so, she forged stronger ties with many friends and family because of the work that she did for them in this respect. Now, James Craig ran a Summerbrook dental practice in Aurora, Colorado. And I practice at Summerbrook Dental Group. My approach to dentistry begins with sincerely listening to the patient and wanting to find out more about where they're coming from and what they're looking for and what they want. One of the things that makes Summerbrook Dental so unique is our ability and willingness to comfortably treat patients who have high anxiety about dental procedures. Most dentists don't want to see those types of patients in their practice because it's difficult and it can be hard to overcome that anxiety. I thrive on that though. I love the challenge. I love creating an environment where people are surprised at how comfortable they are. I like to put together some options for the patient because dentistry can be expensive, dentistry can be scary, dentistry can be uncomfortable. Not every treatment plan can fit every patient. And so I want to let the patients know what's possible so that when they leave this office, they feel like they own their own treatment plan. And that way we make sure that we're giving the patients exactly what they want. The feedback that we receive from patients is overwhelmingly positive. We have such a great team here that I don't have to worry too much about what everybody's experience is going to be because it's always good. What I like most about this place is the people. The smiles on their faces and the greetings they offer when you come in the door. What I love most about this practice is how nice and friendly they are and how they always make me feel welcome. I got crowns done on my front teeth and now I'm not super self-conscious about them and I like them. If someone asked me if they should come to this practice, I would tell them absolutely 100%. This experience was probably one of the best I've ever had in a dentist chair. The most satisfying thing about my job is when a patient leaves and they say, wow, that was a lot easier than I expected it to be. I love to make dentistry easy for people. Not far from the home that he shared with Angela and their multitude of children. And he worked in this practice along with Ryan Redfern, who had gone to dental school with Craig in Kansas City. So as a result, they'd known each other for years. 
And when Ryan Redfern and his brother approached Craig to join their dental support organisation, their conversations became far more meaningful when they eventually became business partners. So far, so life as usual. On the surface, all seemed well for the Craig family. But there was one incid incident in the mid-2010s that foreshadowed what would be a more serious incident in March of 2023. A relative of Angela revealed what lay beneath the veneer of the ostensibly good Craig marriage. With this relative saying, Angela and James' marriage had always been tumultuous, and James had multiple affairs with several women. He had told Angela he had been addicted to pornography since he was a teenager. And ultimately he drugged Angela in around 2015 or 16. Angela said that James drugged her with an unknown substance because he had planned to go into their bathroom and give himself a lethal injection of something in order to commit suicide. And James told Angela that he drugged her so that she wouldn't find him nor be able to save him, which would give the lethal drugs time to kill him. The mother of six remained with her husband after this because of course she did. Your significant other admitting to secretly poisoning you is clearly the key to all successful relationships, is it not? Despite this turbulent history, no one expected Angela to become ill in 2023. The mother of six had been getting increasingly ill throughout the month of March. She went to the hospital on the 6th of March, also on the 9th of March, when she was admitted until the 14th of March, and again on the 15th of March, which would become her final stay in hospital. She had been suffering from extreme vomiting, headaches, low blood pressure and dizziness. Her eyes could not focus and she knew that something was seriously wrong. In texts with her husband, Angela complained that she felt as she did when she took heavy drugs as if she were moving through syrup or gel. Texts between the couple also indicate that James Craig referred to the previous poisoning suspicions himself in the days leading up to what would be his wife's death, with him telling her in texts, Given our history, I know that must be triggering. Just for the record, I didn't drug you. Hmm. Why even bring that up, James? Hmm? 
Hmm. Doctors could not figure out what was wrong with Angela. But her husband's colleagues had their suspicions. Some of them knew that the couple had been having marital problems. And an office manager had also noticed strange behaviour with this manager detailing how she had seen James Craig working on a computer in an exam room, although he rarely actually used that space and had his own devices elsewhere. He'd also told this manager to be on alert for a personal package that he'd ordered to arrive at the office, adding that she should not open it. But when another employee did open it, not knowing that they weren't meant to, the manager glanced inside and happened to see potassium cyanide. She then googled potassium cyanide and realised that the symptoms matched up with Angela's recent illnesses and as a result the police were called. He tried to explain his way out of the situation by claiming that his wife had been suicidal and had made past suicide attempts, which Angela's friends and children denied ever witnessing. Craig went as far as claiming that he had to revive Angela on not one, but several previous occasions. He also alleged that Angela's supposed suicidal ideation had worsened after he brought up the possibility of divorce in December of 2022. But text messages between the couple paint a very different picture. Text exchanges show that he had his wife under the impression that he was committed to patching things up. And while his wife fought for her life in a hospital bed, the disgraced dentist continued to thank church friends for their prayers, noting that it was pretty scary not having answers. And while James Craig was expressing worries to friends and family, he was also discussing his wife's deteriorating condition with the Texas orthodontist with whom he was having an affair. Oh, bless the poor victimized cockwomble. Sorry, I should probably say alleged cockwomble. Reports suggest that James Craig was flying this woman into Denver even while his wife and the mother of his children was dying in the hospital. When he told the woman that something happened to his wife, she sent James an email explaining how sorry she was for him 
and that she wished she was helping him and not pulling him away. She stated she knew it had to be so hard what he was going through and that she wanted to be there for him but did not want to mix in with his family and friends and pretend to be only a friend when there was something more. And this woman never thought that any of this was odd, it seems. Clearly the love goggles were still on. That email was sent on the 16th of March and Angela was pronounced dead two days later. And here's a red flag for you. Her husband refused requests to conduct an autopsy, including from relatives pleading for answers in case the cause of her illness had been genetic. Craig argued that if doctors couldn't find the source of his wife's sudden illness while she was still alive he did not want them poking holes when she was dead i wonder why he didn't want them to talk screen anyone but anywho Craig was arrested on the 19th of March to the shock of many friends, family and wider community members. Michelle Redfern, the wife of Craig's business partner, and this was the business partner who'd known the couple for about two decades, she said, it's been a roller coaster of emotions. There's a lot to deal with as you go through that. It was coming to terms with deception and thinking that you knew somebody, but you didn't. In the aftermath of Angela's death, James Craig was charged with first-degree murder in the death of his wife, who, as we know, had died on March the 18th, 2023, and this was through lethal doses of cyanide and tetrahydrosoline, which is a decongestant found in over-the-counter eye drops. In addition to first-degree murder, he was also accused of attempting to persuade one of his daughters to tamper with physical evidence in order to facilitate a crime. And this was between March the 18th, 2023 and March the 31st, 2023. He is also accused of attempting to persuade a second person to cover up evidence between March the 18th, 2023 and June the 15th, 2023. Craig was booked into the Arapahoe County Detention Center at about 9 a.m. on March the 19th, 2023, and has remained in jail since, with the exception of the few court hearings that there have been. The arrest complaint states, James Tolliver Craig unlawfully and fel feloniously commanded, induced, 
entreated or otherwise attempted to persuade and the person's name is here but that's been redacted to commit the felony of tampering with physical evidence with intent to promote or facilitate the commission of that crime and under circumstances strongly corroborative of that intent. James Craig pleaded not guilty to his wife's murder and was scheduled for a jury trial in August but we're still awaiting for that trial to officially begin. As we know the couple were married for more than two decades and shared six children. Authorities believe that James Craig poisoned his wife to death by first dosing her with arsenic which sent her to the hospital and then dosing her with cyanide if at first you don't succeed. He ordered arsenic from Amazon.com on February the 27th, 2023, police allege. Gotta love that one click. He received the package on March the 4th, and two days later his wife was admitted to a hospital with symptoms that aligned with poisoning. She was released that day, but returned to the hospital on March the 9th, where she stayed all the way through to March the 14th, 2023. A blood sample taken on March the 9th showed that she had toxic, but not lethal levels of arsenic in her blood. While she was hospitalised, James Craig ordered two additional poisons, the cyanide that we know about, and also oleandrin. Um, and these were ordered from medical suppliers, according to an, uh, uh, an arrest affidavit. He never received the oleandrin because the package was intercepted by the police. The cyanide was delivered as we know to his office on March the 13th 2023. Two days later on March the 15th Angela Craig returned to the hospital with additional symptoms. She then suffered a heart attack, was placed on a ventilator, and her condition rapidly deteriorated until her death on March the 18th. As we know, James Craig used a communal computer at his workplace in Summerbrook Dental in Aurora and he used this computer to search for information on poison and this was in the weeks before Angela Craig's death. The searches included how many grams of pure arsenic will kill a human is arsenic detectable in autopsy? Top five undetectable poisons that show no signs of foul play. How to make poison. And the top ten deadliest plants, brackets, they can kill you. And this was all according to the arrest affidavit. Now, I'm not advocating murder or crime in any way, but fuck me. 
this was a bit of a schoolboy error, was it not, in all honesty? Since his arrest, the mystery woman that James Craig was involved with has come forward to explain things from her side. This morning, a Colorado dentist waking up behind bars accused of poisoning his wife and the mother of their six children. Police calling Angela Craig's death heinous, complex, and alleging Jim purchased cyanide and secretly poisoned her protein shakes. According to the arrest warrant, after multiple recent hospital visits, Angela again checked into a hospital Wednesday morning, complaining of a severe headache and dizziness. Around 2 p.m., she had a seizure, her condition rapidly declining. Doctors moving her to the ICU where she was put on life support before passing away Saturday. My heart is broken for those children. They've lost a mother. Police zeroing in on her husband, according to the warrant, after his co-worker told a nurse that James had ordered potassium cyanide to the office, adding there was no medical reason or purpose to make such an order. The key is going to be the following. Can they trace whatever killed her to him? Did he order it? Did he pick it up? James, a dentist at Summerbrook, Aurora, seen here in this promotional video. My approach to dentistry begins with sincerely listening to the patient. His patients say they relied on him to ease their anxiety. He always made a word that I was okay and comfortable. And now I think my anxiety is even more heightened because I'm like, who do I trust? Police also believe James was having an affair, even flying a woman out to see him while his wife was dying in the hospital. Family members telling authorities this is not the first time James had tried to poison his wife. And the week before her death, she texted him that her head felt funny and dizzy, then said, I feel drugged. James replying, given our history, I know that must be triggering. Just News has reached out to James and his family, but have not received a response. And family members claim that Craig had multiple affairs over the years. They also say the couple was experiencing financial hardship. Now he is set to appear in court again on Thursday. To the Colorado dentist suspected of fatally poisoning his wife, allegedly lacing her protein shakes after buying arsenic and cyanide. He is due in court today. Kana Whitworth joins us now with more. Good morning, Kana. Yeah, Robin, good morning. So authorities say that he used his credentials as a dentist to have cyanide delivered to his office, telling a staffer the package contained a surprise ring for his wife, when instead it was a deadly poison. The couple married more than two decades. Former employees of James Craig say their relationship seemed perfect. Their relationship seemed like right out of a fairy tale. It's very hard. It's devastating. I still can't wrap my head around it. According to the arrest warrant, a family member says it was anything but, calling the marriage tumultuous and alleging Craig had previously given his wife, Angela, the mother of their six children, a substance without her knowledge. According to the warrant, Angela's sister told investigators James drugged Angela five to six years ago, allegedly because he had planned to take his own life and didn't want her to wake up and find him before he was dead. Investigators say Angela's own words to her husband are part of the case they're building against him. In a text message sent on March 6th, they say she wrote, had my protein shake, adding, I feel drugged, to which James allegedly responded, given our history, I know that must be triggering. Just for the record, I didn't drug you. The once beloved dentist seen in this promotional video for his practice. I also have a very strong philosophy that a happy team makes happy patients. Also allegedly facing financial troubles. James' co-workers saying he was on the verge of bankruptcy. And according to the arrest warrant, investigators believe he was having an affair and wanted to start a new life with an orthodontist from Texas. Emails showing a flight confirmation to Denver on March 8th for his alleged mistress. Just one day before Angela was hospitalized for a second time, seen in these photos that James texted a friend. A week later, she was back at the hospital complaining of dizziness and a severe headache, then suffering a seizure, eventually put on life support before passing away. 
Now, in the meantime, authorities say he had already booked yet another flight back to Denver for his mistress. He is set to appear in court this morning or the DA will likely formally charge him. Robin. Kena, our thanks to you. We're going to bring in our chief legal analyst, Dan Abrams. What do you make of this, Dan? So this is an easily understandable case uh, for a jury, right? You have Google searches, one which includes top five undetectable poisons that show no signs of foul play. You've got how many grams of pure arsenic will kill a human. I mean, these aren't ambiguous searches that are happening on Google. You combine that with the fact that he is actually ordering poisons, put that together with the affair, and the problem for him is it's not complicated, right? It's not battle of medical experts, mm. even though that may exist here to some degree with regard to cause of death, it may end up being secondary. How about the alleged previous attempt of, of, of drugging his wife that we heard in Kena's report? How, how important is that? I, I would think it's gonna be critical in conjunction with what we see here. You know, what makes this case a little different, and we were talking about this mm -hmm. before, than some of these other high profile cases involving, for example, antifreeze, right? That's the sort of thing where someone tries to hide the fact that they're effectively killing someone over time. They want to cover their tracks. They don't want people to know. Here he's ordering poison to his work. These are just poisons. I mean, his partner's saying, in effect, what is this for? Um, and he has to respond, well, you know, my wife, she wanted it, she's been depressed, et cetera. I mean, it, it kind of makes no sense. So, so that's the problem for him at this point based on the affidavit. Do you expect that the woman he's involved with will possibly testify? I, I, I do. Know. I expect that she'd be called. We don't know exactly what she'd say, right? We don't know if she'd say she became suspicious, et cetera. But I, I would expect that she would be called to, to talk about what was he telling you? How was he acting? Did you find anything suspicious, et cetera? Okay. It's a crazy one this it, week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really yeah, is. yeah, yeah. Is. All right, Dan, thanks so much. To the Colorado dentist accused of murdering his wife by secretly lacing her protein shakes. The woman he had started seeing is speaking for the first time in an ABC News exclusive. Our chief national correspondent, Matt Gutman, sat down with her. Good morning, Matt. Hey, good morning, Michael. In the many hours I spent with Karen Kane, she told me she felt deceived by the man that she thought she had fallen in love with. She said that dentist had lied to her about being deep into a divorce, lied to her about the values they shared, lied to her about why his wife was dying. And this morning at this courthouse, he faces that preliminary hearing in which prosecutors will try to convince a judge that there is enough evidence to try him for the first degree murder of his wife. It's a story that made national headlines earlier this year. The shocking death of a beloved mother of six, Angela Craig, who died after a mysterious illness. Her family remembers her for being a fiercely devoted parent and friend. Soon after, her husband arrested for allegedly poisoning her. According to the arrest affidavit, authorities suggest he had murdered his wife to be with another woman. But that woman now says their connection was built on lies. You've been labeled the mistress in this story. Yeah, I don't like that label. If I had known what was true, I would not have been with this person. In total, how long were you together with James Craig? I want to say it lands right exactly at three weeks. Do you think that James Craig allegedly poisoned his wife to clear the deck so he could be with you? There's no way I'm motive. There's been no planning a future together. When Texas orthodontist Karen Kane met Dr. James Craig at a dental conference last February, she wasn't looking for love. She was in the process of a divorce from her husband of almost 30 years. We met on a Thursday and then went home on Saturday. So we spent this Thursday evening getting to know each other. We sp and, and then we texted until like, you know, 4 a.m. that night. Then the next day we, you know, spent pretty much the day together. They seem to have shared values, a strong faith. Their children, their number one priority, and both seem to be in a similar place. She says he told her he was also deep in the divorce process. He told me they hadn't been living together. He had an apartment. After the conference, the two remain in constant contact. It was just consistent from like 6 a.m. to 2 a.m. There was a lot of just feeling like so connected. Pretty soon they're making plans for Karen to visit him in Colorado. She says an initial trip falls through and is rescheduled. And the day before Karen arrives in Denver, Angela's health takes a horrific turn. She suffers a seizure, is on life support, 
and is not expected to survive. Originally, it was like, maybe I shouldn't really even come. And he was like, I could really use the support. Karen tells me they met for dinner twice. He at no point seemed stressed or anxious or, I mean, really, I had to drag it out. I'm like, are you sure you're okay? Because he seemed okay. But all is not okay. Soon after Angela is pronounced dead, James is arrested on charges of first-degree murder. And investigators are questioning Karen. Her initial disbelief turns to shock when she reads the arrest affidavit. These are the allegations that within days yeah. of meeting you, he starts researching potassium cyanide and is buying these deadly poisons. Yeah, and it wasn't until the media started reporting on it that I realized the timeline was so tight that it was like two days after we had left that meeting. When you read that affidavit that he was Googling things like how many grams of pure arsenic will kill a human? Is arsenic detectable in an autopsy? What was that like? I don't really think I have an answer for that because it's like I don't have any sort of headspace of my reality where that fits. I didn't willingly have a relationship with somebody who was in a marriage. Karen says they never consummated the relationship, and what she hoped was a promising new romance has ended with her pulled into a tragic investigation. And of course, the ultimate victim here, a vibrant woman, a daughter, a sister, and a mother of six. I can't even imagine the loss of, of a family member and then the to consider that it could be at the hands of someone that had been in the family for 25 years. Again and again in our time together, Karen lamented the tragedy of the six children that James and Angela shared. She says that she has been cooperating with investigators since the night that Angela died. For his part, Dr. James Craig maintains his innocence. He has not yet entered a plea. That will likely happen about three to six weeks from now at the arraignment. Guys. All right. Recent hearings ahead of a full trial have indicated that evidence from his mistress is particularly damning. And I'll show some of that purported evidence on the screen now. But for now, James Craig remains remanded to custody and has, quite rightly in my opinion, been banned from contacting his children. With the real shame being that three of the six children are under 18. So with a community dental practice and, of course, six children, the ripple effects from the case are already causing widespread damage to a family and a community already reeling from Angela's death. Whatever the outcome of the case, which I will update you on as updates become available, a very loving and involved mother sibling to nine and friend has clearly died long long before her time angela was just 43 when she died and this video is dedicated to the memory of this much loved woman I can only hope that the case brings a degree of finality. But I suspect the repercussions are only just starting to happen now that the dust is settling. But I do hope that Angela has found peace since her very suspicious death. I send love to her friends and family, in particular the six children who that have been left without a mother. 
Thank you for watching another episode of Murder of Crows. Please subscribe if you haven't yet, as it really helps me to keep making content. And with that said, I'm Steve, this mercenary feline is Samson, and we will see you when we see you. Say that you're crazy.